So we've now got our tracks imported into Rekordbox and we can think of our collection within Rekordbox much like a record collection, a physical record collection. Now you might have 500 records or a thousand records or 10,000 records, but you're not going to take them all to a gig. And that's the same thing with Rekordbox. So we have our entire collection here and that will be sitting on our computer. But then when we come to play out, we're going to want to take a certain number of these tracks and put them on a USB stick ready to play out. And that's why we're going to create a playlist next. A playlist basically allows us to narrow down a few tracks or a bunch of tracks that we're going to play in our set. So now we're going to create our first playlist. So we go to the playlist section here and to the right of the title we can see there's a button there with a plus symbol on that will create our very first playlist now you can call this playlist whatever you want to whether it's a gig that you've got coming up or whether it's a certain guest mix you're recording i'm just going to call it demo for now so we now have our very first playlist so we can start putting some tracks in it so i'm going to go back to the collection and what i can do is i can actually drag and drop these tracks into the playlist and then if I go back to the playlist, you'll see that track is now within there. Now, you're probably not going to be putting tracks in there without listening to them. So how can you quickly listen to them? Well, you see the waveform here on the left hand side. You can click on this waveform wherever you want within there and preview the track. So you can see the waveform represents the whole track. You can actually click anywhere within there to preview that track. So as you can see, it's a very simple way to go through all of your tracks and listen to separate parts of them. So rather than playing every single track from the start, you can actually go straight to the middle of a track and listen to it. It'll help you pick out the tracks that you want to for your set. Now, in much the same way in which we were able to select multiple files when we were importing them, we can do exactly the same within here. So say for example, I could select all of these tracks and then drag and drop them into the playlist. We could also maybe do a search for a certain track or maybe an artist. And that would then show us all the tracks by that artist or the track title or whatever matches that search. Now you'll notice that if you try and drag the same track onto that playlist, if it's already in the playlist, it'll actually warn you. It will say that it's already in the playlist and do you want to add a duplicate? Now, most of the time you'll probably select skip on this because you'll probably be adding the track again by accident. But if you wanted to add it twice within the playlist, you can click add. For now, I'm going to hit skip. Now, if we go back to our playlist, we can actually start arranging this however we want. Now with playlists, you can obviously do as the name suggests. You can actually organize these tracks in the order that you want to play them in. So you can drag and drop these around and start changing the order of how you want to play these tracks. It's totally up to you. However, you don't have to do this. Playlists can just be a crate or a certain selection of tracks that you want to pick from when you're playing out. So you don't even have to put these in an order if you don't want to. You could even do a combination of the two where you could decide maybe the first two or three tracks you want to play, but then leave the rest of the playlist unsorted. Now, apart from the tracks that I've just dragged and dropped around, you'll notice that these tracks are ordered in the way in which I added them. Now, when you add a track to a playlist, it'll automatically put it to the bottom of the playlist and you can obviously drag and drop it around from then. Now, playlists generally look very similar to your collection. You can see that most of the tracks are displayed in very much the same way. However, there are certain parts of a playlist that you can customize. If you'll notice under the playlist, we actually have the title before the artist, whereas with the collection, we'd already moved this around. So as you can see, it's two different views in two different places. So we could take the artist and we can move that around if we wanted to, if that's how we want our playlist to look. You'll also notice on the left hand side here, a numbered column. This is the order in which the tracks are shown. Now, when you're playing your playlist out on a Pioneer device, you are able to sort these out by however you want to, by artist, by track title, by BPM, by key. There's loads of different ways you can sort it, but you can sort it by the default method, which would be the numbering here. So you can actually set up here the order in which you want to play tracks. And then on the actual player themselves, it will show in that order. Now, if you're liking this course and always wanted to make your own DJ edits, bootlegs and remixes for your sets, then you might be interested in another course that I've done. I've got a complete beginner's guide to Ableton aimed at DJs wanting to make their own edits. I'll teach you Ableton from scratch and I'll teach you just the skills that you need to know when you need to know them so you're not overwhelmed by it all. I've had some amazing reviews from over 400 students that have already taken the course. Check out the link at the top of this video or in the description for more information. 
So now we need to get our playlist onto our USB. And this is where Rekordbox does all the hard work for you. There's actually two ways we can get our playlist onto the USB. We can either export it or we can sync. So the first way is exporting. If I right click on this playlist, you'll see there's an option here to export the playlist. And then when I go to the right here, you can see this is my USB stick. If I hit that, it will then be transferred to the USB stick. The first time you export your tracks to your USB stick, you will be given this warning just to let you know that some of the features that you are setting within Rekordbox don't apply to certain controllers within the Pioneer range. If you don't want to see this again, just check the don't ask me again and click OK. So now down the bottom, we can see the progress bar that is actually now automatically transferring all the tracks onto our USB stick along with the playlist information. Once that's done, it will disappear and we now know that is on our USB stick. Now what I can do is I can go to devices, I can click the little arrow here, which actually shows me a whole load of information about our USB stick. If I click on all tracks, you can see all the tracks that are on our USB stick. These are all the tracks that we'll put in that playlist. So it only transfers the tracks that are within the playlist that we've exported. I can also go to playlists on my device as well and see that our playlist is now within there. So this is a duplicate of the playlist that we have on our computer. Now, as I mentioned, this is just one way of doing it. And every time that we update our playlist, we then need to export it again to our USB. So every time we make a change, whether we're putting in a different order or we're adding more and more tracks, we then have to export it every single time to keep it updated on our USB. The other way of doing this is using the sync manager within Rekordbox. The sync manager within Rekordbox is a really clever feature because it automatically keeps your USBs up to date with any changes you make on your playlists on your computer. So in this dialog that opens, we can see we have three columns within here. We can ignore the iTunes column for now and just concentrate on the Rekordbox column and the device column. So the Rekordbox column shows us all the stuff that's within Rekordbox and then everything in the device column shows us everything that is on the USB stick. Now what I can do is I can set to automatically synchronize playlists with device. So if I check that, I can then choose which playlists are automatically synced every time I make a change. Now I can choose to select all of my playlists or I can select them individually. We've only got one playlist on here so far, so I'm just going to select one for the moment. And then what I'll do is I'll hit this arrow here and that automatically synchronizes it for the first time. Now, because we haven't made any changes, it did it really, really quickly. So I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to make another change to our playlist on our computer. I'm going to move these around a little bit. And what I'll also do is add a few more tracks to that playlist. Now, if I go to my USB stick and the playlist that's on my USB stick, you can see it has the old playlist in there without the new tracks that I've added. Now, if I eject this USB stick, so say, for example, I went off to play a gig and then I came back another day and put my USB stick back in my computer. Moments after, it will start automatically synchronizing. And if I go back to my playlist now, you can see it's got the new tracks on there and the new order that I set. Now, if you're finding it doesn't automatically sync, you can actually do it manually. So if I go to the sync manager and then just hit the arrow, it will automatically sync for me. And I tend to do this because I like to know that it's actually done it. It is totally up to you which way you prefer doing. You can do the export way if you find that's the best way of doing it. But if you're managing multiple playlists, which we will be showing a bit later on in this course, then doing the automatic sync works out so, so well. Now, as I mentioned, when you do export your playlist to the device, it automatically moves the tracks onto the USB stick for you. You don't need to do any kind of manual moving at all. So if I go to the USB stick in my file browser, you can see the record box has added two folders within there. The first one is the Pioneer folder. So this is where it stores all of the settings for record box. When you insert it into different Pioneer devices, it will then be able to load those up. The second folder is contents. This is where it kind of moves all your music to. Now it stores this all in its own format. And this is what I mean by just let it do it all automatically because there's no need to go in and organize any of this yourself. It does it all automatically itself. So don't worry about transferring anything else onto that USB stick. Rekordbox will do it all for you. In the same way, don't add anything onto this USB stick on your own. Don't put anything else on there. Just let Rekordbox organize it all automatically.
So you're now ready to take your USB stick and play your DJ set. But before you do that, you must make sure that you hit the eject button before taking the USB stick out. If you don't do that, then Rekordbox may still be writing information to the USB device, and in which case it might become corrupted and not work properly. So you must make sure that every time you go to play, you hit that eject button to make sure that USB has been properly ejected from your computer, then you can take it out.